Okay, thanks. So welcome everyone to this developer meeting on November 20th, 2022. And I head over to Christian Ambras, who is leading us in today. Christian. Yes, uh, I want to uh, welcome you to our uh, dev meeting today. And um, I think the last week was uh, pretty busy at um, many points. And yeah, let's hear what uh, you can tell us about what you achieved or what you thought about the last week. So, Ooh. okay, uh, maybe I can can tell uh, what um, I was uh, working on and what I got so far and got some stuff together. Um, I uh, got my Dean rail fixed and uh, was uh, putting some hardware on. I've got this uh, Pi 4 uh, casing with uh, included um, Dean rail clamp on it. Then I've uh, got a second model. If you do not want to use this this housing, you can use the one with the uh, armor that is uh, a heat sink already included. And this one fits in this housing, which I was uh, working on around January this year. Hi, Michael. Um, and um, with some nice clamping, this is working pretty easy. And uh, is an addition or a, a modding thing for our uh, bottom part of the enclosure. So this the rail can be fixed here. It's 42 centimeters long, and uh, you can stack up the pies, the uh, nanos, everything that you want to place. Uh, and um, yeah, it's a work in progress that I already got finished so I can uh, mount it in the next week. Uh, I did the wedding of the uh, may I interrupt here? fish eye optic. Christian, sorry, may I interrupt here? Um, before yeah. you go into the camera, uh, when you talk about this Huchine uh, mounting, um, I would consider all the energy that is created inside as a problem. So in a way that any heat that electronic is created has to be dissipated into the out to the outside as soon as as quick as possible. Working with yes. the Huchine, huh, how how would you go for that? Um, we we have fan ducts that uh, are the, are connected to the main uh, um, power supply. Yeah. Okay, you would go. You for, remember? Yeah, yeah, you would go for the same fan duct kind of fan duct. Yeah, I, I created this so that uh, the main uh, fan duct that uh, uh, Oliver uh, um, gave me, um, he he printed some out. Mm -hmm. This this is working with it. You you can just place it uh, on on uh, directly on the uh, on this uh, case of the Pi Four, or you can place it here. And, um, and how do you it is connected. This, yeah, how do you connect it to the PSU then? Um, you mean you, you would go, for example, I just fathom your idea. So if you have a 40 centimeter rail where you have all these boards lined up next yes. to each other, how and every board is creating heat that you don't want to have inside. That's why we're blowing it outside. How? I mean, if you do um, the PSU on the one side and you have all these, let's say, eight boards, and how do you pipe them towards this? Um, I would one. Uh, I would use one of the heat pipes uh, used in uh, modern server cases, and uh, create uh, the, um, the 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 fitting heat pipes uh, to. Uh, the Pi or the Nano uh, that is um, stored either this way or that way. And for this case, we already have um, some kind of heat pipe. That, that, Oliver printed one okay. and sent me one already to to uh, to use it, to, to, um, to have some experiments with it. Um, okay. you, you produced um, the, the housing for the... Uh, um, ATX uh, power supply with two fan ducts at mm -hmm. uh, two, two fan 
uh, inlets uh, on the side, mm -hmm. remember? Mm -hmm. And uh, this one can be connected to that uh, already. Yes. So you can create um, an insulated heat pipe on top and just connect it to that and then uh, get rid of the heat mm. through the main uh, through the ventilator of the the, the main uh, power supply. But you you know well that, for example, if this is a board and the fan sits on top of the board, so that you need an extra distance until the next board can come on uh, the rail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. it's around. Uh, it's uh, it's about that thick. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, the the distance that um, I measured uh, two hours ago. And the fan is inside. Oh. The fan is inside this little compartment, or uh, f with uh, this uh, case, yes. And here, if I, if I use that one, it's mm -hmm. it's the same model as, mm -hmm. as here. Mm -hmm. It's uh, directly mounted into the heatsink. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's that flat. Can just take that one out, mm -hmm. put that one in, and then the uh, on here you would put uh, the uh, the heat pipe that just has to connect, like let's say 15 cent, 10 to 15 centimeters above, to the main heat pipe. And if you store them next to each other like this, for example. Ah, you go for a collecting heat pipe. I see. Okay, got it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter if you put it like this. With with this mounting, you can store, let's say, twice as much uh, pies or whatever you like uh, next to each other. And uh, the heat pipe has, n n has not to be that long. If, if you but place I see, them I like see, I see a complexity in in the three D the modeling of those heat pipes. I mean, now you're mounting something vertical and something flat, and the next one is doing it the other way around. So the heat pipe would never fit. So we have to have a heat pipe that is used by everyone, and everyone has to use the rail in the same way because there's only one heat pipe. Otherwise, we there's hundreds of possibilities with heat pipes. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm, my, my yeah, point but, is? But if, if we stick to the same um, to, to, to the same form factor, this this is work in progress just to see if this idea is nonsense or not. No, no, and, the, I, uh, I think the idea is great. But the, the only thing the, is I, I don't the don't thing, see a The thing here solution. is we, we have this one, I think, is uh, was uh, made for the uh, for the nano. Yeah, and the here nano. the um, mm. here we have got uh, the places for the pies mm. and uh, not using and, and it, it's a lot of space here and you need uh, the heat pipes uh, for uh, for this section here, too. And I was thinking, OK, how would I do it? And uh, because I wanted to use this this uh, deal, uh, Dean rail um, at my telescope, we're just placing it uh, to the um, uh, to the stand, to the tripod, or anything like that. I'm I'm just mounting it like this on the on uh, on the stand, and have here, let's say, the Pi, uh, some uh, maybe um, um, some some uh, box with uh, for. Uh, um, for the network, for Ethernet, or uh, for the power supplies, or something like that, I can mount it very easily on on the Dean rail, and that that uh, kept me thinking. Okay, can I use or can I reuse that idea uh, you know, for uh, the station? I'm, I'm just figuring it, it out. I do not know exactly if it's a good idea and how do, uh, uh, do I proceed with the heat thing if. One says, "Okay, uh, let's let's keep the pi and the nano as uh, as form factor. Um, it wouldn't matter because then we um, can recreate, let's say, three models um, that we use for the heat piping, and we can uh, make them self-adjustable." There can be a model that that if you use different heights or let's say if, if you put something else in it, um, they can be modified very easily. But first, we have to try it out how these things work out. And the this is the first idea. This is the first guess. OK. Just just a starting point. Yeah, I get it. I, I just want to and, add a uh, concern about 
the heat creation. Yeah. Yes. And um, I was thinking about how to isolate uh, the uh, the um, the heat pipe so that it doesn't uh, radiate uh, the heat uh, and uh, much more into the room of uh, the enclosure. And this is a good way to start. Uh, and uh, there is um, already an isolated heat pipe that can be used in server computers. Um, I think this is a way uh, to start. And maybe we can, um, if if Bojan is is uh, is. Uh, already uh, working on um, the version with the Peltier elements to cool it, um, maybe we can derive some kind of surrounding cooling pipe to it so that it takes uh, the heat uh, flow and, uh, and uh, cools this heat pipe from the outside. But there, we have to think about that. This is just a try and uh, this, this is what I uh, did in the spare time when not coding. Yeah, the other thing I did, yeah, oh, okay, about the camera, I uh, um, 3D printed the adapter, the inlet part of the adapter, and it's uh, fitting. Um, I found, or we found out that uh, my camera, my, um, my fisheye uh, optic um, has a displacement for the in, uh, for the inner uh, hole ring for the screws. It has an offset to um, the one uh, Richard and Oliver have uh, for I think it's about uh, uh, zero two millimeters, um, and um, so. This one uh, is fitting, and I have to reprint uh, the other parts. And uh, that is what we changed together. Uh, we um, we measured it out if uh, if this uh, difference exists, uh, and um, then we uh, modified mm -hmm. this adapter uh, using um, a slit instead of a screw holes, so that if way. there are difference in the production, like we encountered, um, this will fit for all. And um, yeah, it was nice to work on that with uh, both guys. They, it was fun. And yeah, this this is uh, already working. And uh, for the next week, uh, I'm going to print the other part. We we call it flying saucer, so that we can mount it in the all sky cam tower and on put on top the acrylic dome. The last part I did was working on the firmware for the camera. We are going to produce our own firmware now uh, because um, it's much easier than uh, just use things out of the box that we have to modify. And um, therefore I um, converted my uh, own uh, astronomical math library to make use of it. And yeah, this is how uh, the, the whole adapter looks like. And it's, uh, yeah fitting perfectly I see yeah it's perfect everything fits perfect yeah so the last week was very productive I would say who wants to go on I think we have several topics Christian if you ask someone who is going on then you can wait for half an hour and nobody is saying anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay um, yes. I think we have several topics. Um, one topic is, uh, let's say, the kinematics that Yannick is, um, has shown some interesting results. And I think we shall take the opportunity today, because Lionel is also here, um, oh, that hi. you both, that we go deep, a little bit deeper now into the kinematics. Because I think that Yannick's uh, yes, yes, we can approach do that. Is, inter is very interesting. Yes. Maybe Yannick, you can lay, you can lay out what you did. Uh, yes, I can try. Maybe Lionel, can you mute yourself? Sure. Okay, thanks. Uh, whenever you want to make a comment, just uh, comment at any time. Uh, maybe I can just... Okay. <laughs> maybe I can share my screen. Um, 
Uh, I just share my whole screen, maybe. So, do you see my screen now? Coming. Yep. Yeah. So, I worked um, on the so-called uh, time series classification mm -hmm. approach. Uh, that's a, uh, um, a specific approach in machine learning uh, where you want uh, to classify um, data, time series data. Um, and I uh, did some research, came across it, and I thought that would be really well a good fit for, for what we plan with this kinem kinematics approach. And for example, it's also used, um, for example, um, when you want to classify some, some type of activities that uh, people do based on acceleration data uh, and, 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 and other data uh, that is related to um, people moving around, for example. So if they play basketball or go for a run or whatever. So that, yeah. that is uh, the kind of stuff that you can do with it. And I tested it and um, it seems to work quite fine. So I had just um, a base of about 110 uh, short videos and I extracted tracks from these videos. And I just want to show one example maybe. Um, so this is, I hope that works now. Can you still, still hear me? Yes. And see. Okay, perfect. So this is basically the, the model working on one example track. And that's, this is this plane here. And you see, this is how it currently would look like in real time. So it takes 30 frames. Based on the 30 frames, it makes a prediction what the object is. And it does that for every 30 frames, basically. Hmm. Um, and each prediction is not um, is independent. So it's always on these 30 frames. And that means it detects a plane now correctly because it analyzes uh, the distances that this plane makes from frame to frame and also what kind of directional changes it makes uh, between two uh, direction vectors. So this is the input data and based on these two variables it, it makes a prediction if it's a plane or uh, the other category that I used now was uh, birds. So it, it only Currently, it only knows planes and birds, and it tries to predict if it is a plane or a bird. And so the next thing we can look at is uh, that we can check um, what it does when it sees a bird. And let me see, I think that was uh, these numbers here. I just plugged that in here. And, oops, that was not correct. And we can do the same thing again for, for a bird track. So this is, uh, and here we see the, like the initial difficulty it might have. So um, the first prediction, I think, should say that it is a bird actually. No, okay. <laughs> But then the second prediction is that it is a bird. And the thing is that initially the bird in the first 30 frames, it flies in a very straight line. And so initially the model thinks, okay, it, it's probably a plane because it's so straight, the line. And seemingly th the speed of the bird was very similar to typical planes, let's say. Uh, but as soon as the bird makes a, a, a curve let, um, in the flight path, it it automatically knows that it can't be a plane anymore because the curve was 
to um Kirby. to what do you say steep maybe um so this is what i did currently and uh, the i use a specific um python package for that and this python package is called um sk time and uh maybe you can see that yeah so this is the package that i currently use sk time and they are um there are a, a, a number, several algorithms implemented in that package that we can actually test. So what I currently tested is this Hive code um, algorithm, but there are many others that all do this time series classification thing. So um, I tested that uh, and with... Um, um, the initial um, test I made, it had an accuracy of 97%, it said, but I'm not exactly sure if this number is correct. I have to basically do more testing, and uh, but it looks pretty good, I would say. I, I think whenever you have a plane, it will reliably uh, say that it is, it is actually a plane. And everything else could be more difficult, I think. But I think it's a good step forward already when we can uh, basically discard planes based on the movement. Um, and we can double check that also with the ADSB uh, signal, right? Or data. So we yeah. can, we can, uh, with two kinds, different kinds of, of uh, data, we can make sure that a plane is actually a plane and not interesting to us, let's say. And we can also make some prediction if it's a bird or not, but I wouldn't, currently, I wouldn't really rely on that, let's say. Um, I've got a question. Um, this yeah, post yeah. looks very promising. Um, um, I noticed um, when you ran the bird example um, that uh, it switched to plane uh, on, on the straight path. Um, yeah. What would happen if uh, you would use a video of a helicopter? Because um, I, I don't the have helicopter a sometimes uh, moves as a plane and sometimes move as a bird. And okay, you, you just have yeah. two categories now. Um, would it be more classified like a bird, or would it be would it be classified as a plane, or should mm. the next approach be um, doing um, overall um, classification uh, by collecting um, the flight path and see statistically if it behaves more like a bird or like a plane? Then we would have to uh, to uh, make up uh, a third uh, group, let's say, for helicopters. Okay, yeah, I, I can show you what uh, the input data is that I'm uh, working or plan to work with. Let's say uh, so. Uh, the input data that I had initially was not too many, so I had just two categories: planes and and birds. Uh, so, because uh, for e each of the tracks that we have in our uh, videos, I actually have to uh, look at the tracks and assign an object to that. So, that is work that I had to do before that uh, for the input data. And I went now, now I went through all the videos we have on the Google Drive. Mm -hmm. And I did all the labeling for, for all the tracks, basically, that are long enough. So I need currently 30 uh, frames uh, in a track uh, for the model training. And uh, these are basically all the tracks I could find um, for planes. Uh, so it's not too many, actually, because uh, yeah, we just don't have too many tracks, uh, at least in the Google Drive, uh, where we have a track that goes on for 30 frames or more. And then I have actually I have uh, more bird tracks now, much more. But uh, 
this is uh, not used for training yet so uh i i plan to do that but i uh yeah could, couldn't finish that today but i'm go going to do that um probably in uh uh in not the next uh weekend but the weekend after that uh i will have time again to to work on that and and then i plan to use this as training data all the tracks uh, that we have in the Google Drive for birds and planes. And then we also uh, have some tracks of plants. Uh, I know we probably use the mask uh, for that, so it's not going to be an issue. But just in case, I just uh, thought maybe we could just uh, do it as another category. And then I had two other categories, uh, insects, but I just found two, only two tracks. And... Uh, also one category uh, helicopters but i only found one track with a helicopter and there were two more where i was not exactly sure if it really was a helicopter i, I couldn't decide for sure so i just left them out and um, so this is not enough data for training so what i will yeah. do in the next step is just using planes birds and and plants and yeah. Um, but uh, you could run it uh, with the code you already have and see if it decides whether it's a bird or a plane. I, I would suggest it, it will... Um, yeah, uh, I, I could make a test. That's true. Yeah. Um, I, um, yeah. And, it, and I think my suggestion would be that it identifies it as a plane, uh, as a bird. That could be, although uh, this helicopter that we have, that was actually traveling in quite a nice straight line. But we, we can yeah. make different tests. I already asked uh, Brett if he could send me his uh, drone footage to check uh, whatever the model says about the drones. So the only thing that I would be concerned initially now in this initial phase is if it would in some cases say it's a plane although it's not a plane yeah uh, that wouldn't be good so we should really uh test it hard as hard as we can let's say to make sure that when it says it's a plane it's actually really um really a plane and we and and we should we should double double check that actually also with adsb data always i would say so because we, we see here that in some cases it assumes for one second at least that a bird could be a plane. And I thought about some simple heuristics, for example, uh, when it in one second it's, it decides that it is a bird, uh, it can't be a plane subsequently anymore because it made a turn that is not possible for a plane, let's say. Yeah, but in uh, this case, you you analyzed the behavior, and uh, yes, in some cases, in some part of its way, uh, uh, a bird can behave like a plane, and uh, th this is uh, mm. quite nice to see from your work, and uh, that's an ex excellent outcome that uh, that you have proven that a bird can behave like a, pra a plane and would be yeah, detected it, actually on its uh, way. This is based. Yeah, that's correct. But this is based on thirty frames, so we should. Yes. Keep that in, in, in mind. That is also a parameter that we can test. So we can change that parameter and say, how um, does the prediction change based on the length of the sequence yes. uh, that we throw in there? So I think, if, I mean, for example, if I would say uh, train the model on 60 frames, then it probably would be more reliable. But the problem is also that we would need to wait for 60 frames until it made a prediction. And so yes. um, we have to somehow get a good model that makes a prediction as early as, as, as possible. And my that was my, just my first guess. Uh, I thought it would be good to have a prediction after 30 frames. But I guess when we uh, stream the data with, let's say, 20 frames per second or so, probably would be uh, of course as uh, early as always better but it would probably also be better to strive for 
making a prediction after one second, let's say, that means after 20 frames. Um, and we we just need to test and tune and see how we can make it better, right? Um, and the second thing we definitely, I, or I definitely would need help with, I guess, is making the processing faster. So as, as we saw right now, when I basically stream it live, uh, this is basically importing the, the video, collecting 30 frames and then making a prediction. And we see it takes a while for the model to make the prediction what it is based on the last uh, 30 frames. So uh, we need to make that uh, faster. So my hope is that I find someone here <laughs> who can do that. And then the next thing would also be, I guess, to have this kind of model running uh, in, in parallel, let's say, with the simple tracker. Um, so it doesn't um, hold back basically the, this, the work of the simple tracker. So it, it needs to have its own process, I guess, or, or threat, let's say. Um, can I, yeah, so can I jump in there quickly and just say that yes, um, of course. If, if you do it as a ROS2 node, they will run as independent processes. So you could run them like asynchronously and as long as it has the track ID and as soon as it makes a classification, you can you can pass that through to the... Um, the viewer to say this, you know, this track ID is classified as an aircraft, and then we yeah. can put a label on it. So I, I, I can try and help you kind of integrate it with, um, you know, with a simple tracker that runs on ROS2. That that's not a problem. Yeah, that that would be great because I have no no experience at all with ROS2. So <laughs> um, would be great if someone else could help me with that. Yeah, that's no worries, man. I, I, I can definitely help you with that. So, so yeah, don't, don't, don't worry too much about that. Okay, th thank you. Um, Yannick, I have a question. Yes. Um, your input for this estimation is the JSON file, right? Uh, yes, that's correct. It's the annotations. The yeah. annotations. So it, yeah, what the JSON file, that's uh, exactly. Okay, what parameters are used there? Um, the parameters that I use or the, the input data is, uh, I calculate the distances in pixels from, uh, the position of the box in frame I, let's say, to the position of the box in fra frame I plus, plus one, the distance. And then also, um, I calculate that, that is base, all based on, on Lionel's work, I should say, also. Uh, it's the same approach. Um, then I also calculate um, the, the, the change in the uh, direction vector, vectors uh, between uh, three frames in total. Mm -hmm. So we get a direction vector from frames i minus one to i, and then to frame uh, from, from frame i to i plus one and then i calculate the angle between the two vectors and this is the second variable that goes into the into the model okay. so it's only based on these two not nothing else currently so uh, what i didn't include um as a uh how, how should you say pre-processing part is this um um, polynomial fit. This is not included right now in in this approach, but I mean, could be tested, of course. Uh, but I had the uh, intuition, let's say, that just using the two variables that I uh, just mentioned, that this could be enough already to make a prediction. And so the this algorithm, this Hive code algorithm, I don't know in detail what it does, but I think it does a, a lot of mm -hmm. time series analysis itself, basically. Mm -hmm. So it um, um, it will maybe do some sort of curve fitting, or I don't know. I, I don't know what it, what it does in detail, but some 
some kind of the sort. So, um, because usually it just gets uh, like a raw data, let's say raw sensor data as input. So uh, that's the, the, the usual application of this algorithm. Is the what? is the time stamp in use? Sorry, do you, so it does some um, time series um, analysis, but um, so that means yeah. that the timestamp that's in the annotation is it used as well? Um, no, it's uh, as far as I know, no, it's not used. So. Um, the the data that is used for model training and also application of the model is a data frame, um, and this data frame has one basically one column for for each variable, mm -hmm. and in each cell of the data frame is a series of of uh, measurements, so to speak, uh, from the sensor. Okay. Um, and that took quite uh, some time for me to to ac actually massage the data into this kind of data frame uh, and and make it work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Well, it's awesome. It's great. Thanks. What's Indeed. nice to see is that uh, both of your work is is interconnecting to uh, each other, and um, so so it's it's a very good proof. Uh, of both of your work to see that uh, people are working together and putting pieces together that work actually uh, yeah. quite well with it. And uh, thanks for the good work, I have to say. It's, yeah, it's amazing. This this is just um, the right thing to, to feel about it. It's it's awesome. Yes, as you said. Ryan. Sticking, sticking shape. Yeah, right. Sticking exactly. shape. Yeah. Yeah, oh, and Leonie cool. and I, we worked together before, right? So, yeah, yeah it's it's good. Well, actually, you did you did write that uh, function, those functions for uh, the differentials. I, well, I yeah, could you, be you may be, yes, you may be correct. <laughs> on that, that's, but, that's a but you also, yeah, oh, whatever. Okay. We worked together and it worked. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. It's, yeah. Uh, I got to go now, but. Uh, thanks a lot for that. That's uh, it's great news. Okay, and whenever you want to pick it up, uh... yeah, I will definitely will. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> I'll do that sometime this week. Okay. Bye. Bye -bye. Thanks, Lionel. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. <coughs> So I can share the code, of course. So uh, um, you just have to tell me. Uh, if I should lo uh, upload it to GitHub or something, I guess it needs some some explanation in some parts. So it's um, there are still some things hard coded that shouldn't be hard coded and <laughs> that sort of stuff. But um, because I I can only uh, keep um, working on it in in two weeks again. So just in case anyone wants to take a look at it. I would say you uploaded it to GitHub and make it available to everyone so that now this week can also yeah. take it from there. Yeah, okay. I could I could upload it into the kinematics um there is kinematics repository, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. Um if if I have access to that I can I can do that. Yeah. If not just ping me or Christian. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that was all basically for for this approach. Mm may i um ask something else towards the kinematics approach um yeah yeah so what course. you're using right now is already tracked videos where annotation files json files do exist yes that's correct the downside of this is that this set of, of videos let's say 100 videos just to give a name um i think mike you did these uh json track track files creation a couple of months ago and uploaded it to the drive. And that's the material Yannick oh. is, is using right now. Right? Yeah. So Yeah, so I probably I probably generated the JSON files, but Paul Paul wrote the initial code to produce the JSON files. All right. Anyhow, the JSON files that are generated from a certain version of the tracker. 
I don't know whether the tracker yes. right now also creates JSON files. So, and I don't want to know. Mm. Actually, I do not want to know. My question is, <laughs> <laughs> makes things complicated for me. Now, question <laughs> is, Yannick wants to have uh, video material about helicopters, insects, drones, what have you, because on the drive, there's only birds and, and planes mostly. Uh, yes, you found one with a, with a helicopter and I think two with, with insects, but we actually need more. So my question is, is there a, a way, a possibility, so that the tracker and the kinematics can marry somehow so that we can take raw, Im raw videos and not uh, JSON files, so that the raw videos are tracked, create a JSON that is then used by the kinematics and so on. Yeah, that's what I'm going to try and do when I integrate it into the the ROS2 version, is that that will not produce JSON files. That mm -hmm. will just produce messages. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, it'll it'll there'll be a version of what Yannick's done um in in the ROS2 but it, it 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 won't consume json files it'll it'll consume things slightly differently but i can as long as i understand as long as I, i'll have a look at the code i'm sure i can i'm sure i'll hope i should be able to get my head around how it consumes the json files and how it you know what it uses them for and 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 then i can just do the equivalent hmm. in a different mechanism yeah, and whenever something's unclear, of course you can always ask me. So, yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. No, no, that, that's no worries. I'll, I'll, I mean, as long as it's in, I, I can't do anything this week, and um, and and it might be difficult my first week back home. But so, uh, you know, I'm also only maybe going to be able to look at this in two weeks' time, um, give or okay. take. So, we'll just, be yeah, if if it's. I'll see what I can do, and if I run into any difficulty, I'll reach out to you if that's okay. Yeah, um, perfect. Yeah, um, kind of all I can do, really, to be fair. So um, I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, I, 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 know, I know you're a great programmer, so I, I don't think. Oh, you I don't will. know about that, mate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll give it a go. Okay. But, um, yeah, yeah, and and yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. So whenever you uploaded it to the to the GitHub, Yannick, please give us all an update of that, so okay. that people know when it's there and when we can look at it. Yeah, Perfect. sure. Perfect. Okay. I think yeah, it's, it's really nice to to see that. Uh, I, th I think it's the first time uh, since we are all in this that we can see that uh, the work of three people uh, three people um, is connecting. Uh, to each other and I think it's since we started it half a year yeah mm -hmm. and it, it's pretty nice to see that uh, these thing, uh, things fit together yeah yeah I, I think so too I, I mean I think you can also see that on the hardware part but yeah yeah and mm -hmm. we were all right it um, took us around six months let's say eight months. Yeah. And only, I mean, we have to emphasize that it's only spare time work, right? So, yes. I mean, you have to account for that too, right? So thanks for all the great work, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah, sure. No problem. Absolutely. So do you want me to show anything else or otherwise I would Close my screen now. Um, if you can tr try the uh, uh, try the the helicopter video, and uh, see. Okay. Yeah, I I can I can do that live right now, but I'm going to or maybe I can. Yeah, l let me do that in the background, and maybe okay. I can yeah. show you something later. Okay. Thanks. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Um, this brings me to a topic we discussed in, in our management meeting. Um, um, we have the need um, to get 
a program that, uh, let's say, reads a video, produces an image stream so uh, that anybody can connect to it. And um, like a virtual camera, let's say. Yeah, l like a virtual camera or a camera simulator. Um, and um, hmm. yeah, this this, um, this this could be a good approach for having testing material too. Um, so, I spoke with with uh, uh, with uh, Matt uh, in the last week uh, about uh, things that he needed for for simulating in in right ascension and declination as a, a coordinate system and. Um, he is uh, preparing stuff for having environmental simulations. Um, I do and me talked about uh, basic stuff for having uh, the whole thing, the, the, the whole station as a simulation. Um, so um, for the camera feed as a simulation, um, I think we have to start that one uh, in the near future. So to have simulation material uh, to work on and I'm going to record um, because my camera is running, running right now it, it's attached to the optics I'm, I'm going to record uh, some demo videos uh, for it uh, because I think uh, Rebecca you're in need of it too and um, I'm going to provide them um, I think on, on Google Drive at the moment would that be the right place Richard yes of course why not okay yeah so just to explain why you are talking about this, the thing is that some developers do not have the camera, especially Mike, for example, you, you would really need the camera for your tracker directly working with the stream that's coming from it live. But as we cannot afford um, buying so much hardware right now and, and giving it all to you, uh, that's why this is an idea to overcome uh, that situation. So the idea is that Christian, with his original camera, the camera that we are using in the future, creates videos, just two or three, not many, just just to have some, and then have a, a little piece of software that takes these videos and creates a ROS2 node that delivers uh, image streams, right? Nothing else, nothing more. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a little thing, actually. The only thing it needs is the recordings from your camera and someone who creates a ROS2 note that, some, that Mike, for example, can subscribe to. Yes, and that. So, so, so they, they are, so um, they, they are third-party ROS2 packages that will do that. Um, and I've, 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 experimented with some of them in the yeah I, I've, I've experimented with some of them um so so that's that's not a problem you don't have to um create a you not you don't you, you you don't have to write soft you don't have to write the node to do that all all you do is you just basically ins install it and essentially point it to the video and tell it to loop so yes. um so 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 but then it's playing so, a video and not the uh, streaming single images right well 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 yeah, well <laughs> um well a video is just a collection of images right right mm -hmm. so it's compressed images on stream of images are just stream of images no compression I, yeah the, 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 there are differences i don't understand the difference i i, I don't understand the big, difference. so big basically so, um, um, yeah. So, the the image sequence uh, could be a, a, a small program that just reads the images of a folder and uh, presents it to something, and a video stream is a file. is is a container containing, let's say, a bunch of of images. There there is a big difference between that. And um, but I think uh, there there we uh, there will be. Um, a ROS2 node already created, uh, a third-party ROS2 node that uh, can deal with image sequences. But um, yes. 
because uh, I'm, I'm producing and providing the video, um, I will look into that so uh, that we just need the the interfacing part of it. So, so yeah, uh, if you look at if you look at the Sky Sentinel repo, there's um, there's a there's a I, I, I can send you I, I can send you a package which I've used in the past. Um, okay. If if you if you're interested, I mean, if if you want to do your own research, that's fine. That if you get stuck or, or or anything like that, then just just let me know and I'll send you what I've found. Yeah. What is it doing? What you found? It 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 it, it plays a it plays a video. I, I don't so. <laughs> Sorry, it just yeah. It's, so it basically just it opens a What's video it file that, and yeah, it just streams a video. It just streams the video frame by frame to a ROS node. I, I mean, that's all it does, really. Is that not what you guys want? Frame, frame wise, you say frame wise. Yeah. Yeah. So just it's just uh, basically every, it's 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 the thing we want. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think okay. uh, that uh, uh, while reading, uh, I came uh, across that, and I think uh, it doesn't matter if it gets um, an image sequence source or a video. It uh, detects the right thing and uses it directly. I think we do not have to bother about it, uh, uh, what the source is. It can yeah, just several... take a folder with image, or it uh, takes uh, any video file you, you know of. But Christian, the output of that tool, ROS2 tool, is the same as your preprocessor on the Pi. I call it preprocessor, you call it different, is then putting out a stream of images, right? The, the question right. why we talk about this is to have a kind of a simulated tool that simulates a camera. So, but. You developers have a tool that you can simulate a camera without having one, you know, and that's why it has to yes. be the right the right material from the right camera in the right format, and not just a ROS two streamer that streams a video. So, uh, Mike, your, your... Uh, no 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 for, for, forget that uh, ROS two uh, that uh, ROS two video streamer. Uh, um, uh, we, we will use the right interface uh, uh, at that port because uh, there is already a, a ROS2 node that uh, that you can connect any image sequence to. And this the, for this uh, ROS2 node, it, uh, um, it doesn't matter if it's an image sequence uh, or a video stream so or whatever, or uh, a video file. It doesn't matter source, for that. The source is irrelevant, that. but the output is correct, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I want to say I think that Magnus was working on that. He may have something done, for all I know, but I think he was working on a, a camera. Hmm. Yeah. A media player, so. Yeah, Magnus left us for some time, um, maybe for a year. Family issues. Oh, he did? Didn't uh -oh. he tell you? No, mm-mm. I'm, I'm not showing, I'm not going now into my DM because I'm recording this right now. So um, he told mm -hmm. me that family issues keep him from working with us for the next, let's say, months, maybe half a year, maybe even a year. But he will come back. Oh, I see. No, I wasn't aware of that. So um, my question so, to Mike. Yes, may I ask uh, it, may I... it's right to have uh, maybe to to, uh, to finalize that. It's right. We uh, um, need an interface uh, with uh, with a possibility of uh, having some kind of simulation or just uh, a recorded a pre-recorded video. Um, yeah, but uh, I think uh, I will provide that um, as soon as uh, I have the video. Um, with uh, the Mikey optic and uh, the QHY camera. Mike, your tracker, what is the source that you're working with right now? Video source? Pure video source? Or are you working already on image stream? So, so I, I can, I can uh, draw a, a video stream from a video 
uh, RSTV camera or a USB camera. And there, there is actually a uh, ROS2 package called, I think it's called USB underscore cam or so, so, something like that, which is a, which is a, a driver for USB cameras um, and which works pretty well, actually. Um, so, yeah, so but in the end, you get something different that you will get in the future. You know that. Well, I don't. I don't. So I don't. So I don't quite. I don't quite understand that. So, um, so I would have to see. Yes. Yeah, so I, I. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, because. Um, so right now I, you. I, you... I, I, Excuse me. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. I'm not sure. So usually these things come as, as basically like um, a, 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 a very large three-dimensional array that's encoded um, in some way, like you know BGR, RGB, or HSV, or you know those sorts of things. So there's a specific format of the image. Um, and that's the format I would expect to receive because that's the sort of format that all ROS2 packages and OpenCV and machine learning and neural networks and all this sort of stuff would expect the image to be in, like the frame. The frame needs to conform to a certain format. Can you tell and that? That format's details? already available. Can you give us details about that format? Uh, yeah, pr probably. I mean, it's not. I didn't decide to pull that, um, but I, I, it, it, um, I can, yeah, not, not verbally right now, but yeah, okay. um, I, I can, I, you know, um, but yeah, this stuff is, is fairly, okay. yeah, this stuff's fairly, um, I would say, fairly. Fairly standardized now nowadays, you, you know, uh, uh, all these sorts of, you know, all these ROS2 packages require the image to be in a, a certain, like a, there, there's a variety of encodings you can use, but it does expect it to conform to one of the supported encodings, uh, otherwise you're going to potentially have problems. Why? I mean, ROS2 is a messaging system and you subscribe to something that delivers a data set. It can be anything, can, can't it? Why should it be, yeah, let's say, a bitmap file, for example? Why? No, I'm just, all I'm, all I'm saying is that if you want to leverage and use ROS2 packages that are currently supported by the community, they, they all expect, um, but these ROS2 the, packages the, do something particular with this image, right? Yeah, but the the there's already so the the the, the message definition mm -hmm. that defines how the image is encoded and moved from one ROS node to another is has already been sort of defined by the community so okay so let me just so so this is kind of what i've learned during my experimental phase is i when i wrote or when i converted simple tracker to use ros2 i put together message definitions for the frames that are being transferred from one node to another my suggestion now would be not to do that and to very much use message definitions which are currently defined by the community because then you can use all sorts of other ROS2 packages that have, that have maintained separate to you, but they just conform to that message definition. They, they all use the same message definition almost like a contract. Um, and as long as you can, as long as you use that message definition, then you can potentially use other third party or other open source ROS2 nodes. It's more generic, yes. Yeah, so, and... What is the yeah, real purpose yeah. of this? Sorry, I, I'm, 
I'm playing the dumb guy. I am the dumb guy. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> what is you are. I, I still don't get it. Um, so so okay, the, so, the camera. So the camera. Let, let me give you an example, Mike, and maybe this example okay. gives you the idea what's the what the complexity is. Christian is working on a pre-processing software. Let's call it that way to make it simple, Christian. That creates. Nope, a I'm good. <laughs> okay. That creates a stream of images that are resolution three thousand two hundred by three thousand two hundred, something like that, right? Three thousand six hundred by three thousand six hundred. Three thousand six hundred, and with the color depth of not eight bit but sixteen bit. So in this case, we he has to define a new format of image that we can use. Otherwise, it is not an image. Sixteen bit is nothing a, a, a normal computer deals as an image. So what does a yeah. standard uh, ROS two not make any sense here? I'm just questioning this. No, I, I understand the question. So I don't, I don't know if the existing message supports eight bit and sixteen bit, and you know, I've, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, once I get a video stream, I can, I can try, and see what what happens. All I'm saying is that I think if you if you want to deviate from 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 kind of from what is very well supported currently in the community you you are gonna you're gonna struggle because you're gonna have to do all the implementation yourself or you're gonna have to write a node that like an interpreter node that basically interprets your your version of the message and then shapes it into a message that is consumed by another node which is a third party node so I, my, my suggestion, and this is just what I've also learned recently, is to utilize message types which are supported and decided upon by the Rosti community. Like, utilize those, use those. Don't try not to define your own. Because as soon as you use those, because, I mean... For example, like for, like for, like for example, so here's, yeah, here's an example. Make an example. Okay, so here's here's an example. So I, I would like to, um, in the near future, try and experiment a little bit with machine learning, and um, mainly with these NVIDIA ROS2 packages that use the TechNet as um, a um, um, the, I think there's the inference or that is the classification. I don't know exactly. Uses the TechNet, which utilizes other things like TensorRT, which utilizes things called um, NVIDIA um, Nitros, which which means that for CUDA, it essentially transfers the memory location between nodes versus uploading to GPU memory, downloading you know, um, the node uploads to GPU processes, downloads, then messages to the next node, uploads, downloads. It doesn't do that. The, the messages in between the nodes know that the image is sitting on the GPU and just essentially transfers memory location data. So if you want to use and plug into all those sorts of things, you have to conform to that's the message types that they expect and use. If you if you try and use your own your own message types, then you have to rewrite all those nodes yourself to do all that sort of you know to do all that sort of stuff. If that I don't know if I'm making sense. When so yeah, 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 you do. All, all I, I don't think that that it won't be a problem to um, to uh, have uh, to use the the same standard messaging. Uh, no, I think we're going to do that. Uh, yeah, the only yeah. thing that we just have to do is um, find the right uh, image format, uh, not to lose any of the data that we can provide and have uh, the right 
um, and and conserve the, the right speed to do that. Uh, yeah, but I so don't I think, think that it will be a problem it. about the messaging. Yeah, we we so will think, use I the think, standard one. Yeah, I think that's more the encoding of the image than the actual yes. message type in a way. So, so th I mean, I ran into something the other day where I tried to use a third-party package to replay a video and it failed because it didn't support the the BGR encoding. It expected it to be an RGB encoding. And, you know, so, so with... You know, with this, there's no, there, there's, you know, there, I, I think you're going to, um, I think it's all, all the stuff is still being worked on. No, nothing's like perfect, if that makes any sense. You know, all, all of these third party packages are work in progress. And, you know, if you run into an issue, then you can raise it with a, with a package maintainer or submit a pull request to, so that it supports your, encoding you know i i don't think any of the stuff is insurmountable um it's just i think the, the main point i'm trying to make is is um just to use standardized messages as much as you can uh, what image format are you using at the moment so png jpeg uh, yeah so it's a it's a level above that i you know so the the messages that are transferred over the ROS nodes don't necessarily. So that's a lower. That's a lower level sort of. So that's kind of that sort of logic is in the in the driver of of the the thing that produces the image. So it either reads in a video file and produces an image. Um, that's where that sort of logic is. Mm -hmm. Once okay. once the image is loaded by the driver, and then distributed to nodes it it uses essentially standardized or a standardized ROS2 mechanism for doing that you know encodings and so forth why is encoding you're talking about encoding why is it in play right now I, i'm thinking simple i mean christian is producing an image stream an image stream is either a bitmap a png a gpeg or a fits or whatever but it's a it's it's just a data set it, it could be an excel it could be whatever why is it important for you for the tracker to know that it is a real png file and not whatever a binary dump for example why is it so important let, let, let me let me try to help you. Okay. okay? Let's say that uh, um, um, uh, you know for the user interface, for example, we want to create a, a video stream out yeah. of it. Now, the the ROS2 uh, uh, um, um, uh, ecosystem already has that implementation in place. We don't need to do anything; just including the node to do that. Okay. So the conversion is already implemented in the library of ROS, let's say, to convert an MKV file, for it's, example, into it's, an MP4. It's not library. It's not library of ROS. It's plugin for ROS. It's node for ROS. Okay, ROS is an ecosystem. Yes. Okay. So, so the, what Mike is saying is actually right. You want to rely on the standards that the community created already. Now, where I find that we will have a challenge again is, is because we have high accuracy uh, uh, image quality and probably like most of the ROS2 implementation are not, um, uh, you know, at that level. Um, uh, uh, we will have to go mm -hmm. and, and implement that in addition to the community. To implement and cannot, uh, 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 Support for whatever it is. If, it's, if they don't support 16-bit images, we will need to create that support. Right. So yeah, but that won't be a, a problem. If there is I'm one ROS2 node and there's another ROS2 node and one subscribes to the other and say, give no, me no, that no. stream, no, no. it delivers that stream, whatever the data is. I mean, why is it necessary I, I, to know I, I, that's a PNG? Again, 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 Christian, Christian, I, 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 sorry, Christian, uh, 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 Richard, I'm speaking about something different, okay? Huh. The, the okay. protocol is already in place. That's fine. The topics are are, are ours. Yeah. Okay. The payload, however, because we want to create plugins, we yeah. want to utilize existing plugins. If they don't why? support the format that we need, why? If why, do they we don't need? why do we need them? Because this is the ROS way. 
you don't reinvent the wheel. You use what's out there. To do what? Yeah, it's just, it's also... To make, just... your, to make your robot working. <laughs> so in this case, effort, it's, it's just a, an image from a camera going to a software that's called the tracker. I mean, what is else needed in between? Uh, no, sorry, no, 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 no. You keep looking at it the wrong way. Okay, oh. let me try to help you. Let, let me try to help you again. Why? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. you, okay. you Think about it that you, uh, that you have a chain of functions. Okay. Okay. The, ch the chain of functions that are already exist in the community might not support the image quality that we have okay that means that if we want to use, to create a video stream that will not work if we want to display the image that will not work and, and, and if we want to put it in the neural network that will not work okay because we need to use the standard what is out there supported by the community okay hmm. the only way uh, now it might work i, I don't I just... know it, it might it might work but the, the chances that uh, uh, um, uh, you know mike is speaking of if it doesn't uh, it doesn't work we will need to create a pull request to that uh, 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 community modules or community ros2 nodes to add that support it shouldn't be that hard but we will need to do that sorry i'm still not on your page you have to you have to guide me what I know, what I so, understood. So, so Richard. Okay. Richard. Go so ahead. let's let's if, let's try and think of it this way. So basically, um, like in in like in this day and age, if you use a browser, you can browse any website because it supports a common protocol. It supports HTTP or TLS or whatnot. Okay. You don't you don't need a specific browser to browse a specific website. There's, you know, there's a protocol in the middle that's been standardized and and the, the browser implements support for that protocol as well as the the um, the, 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 web, the web web server. I get the so that, that's that's all we're trying to say is like you know that that in theory that's the same with ROS two nodes. In order to get data from one node to the to the next node, the the the, the shape of the data that goes across the wire needs to be understood by both nodes. Not and necessarily. Mike, you know that you can uh, exchange uh, data any kind of from a web server to a front end, any kind of. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> not, not, not if the node model that you're using is not yours, that you didn't write it. Yeah, so you, you, don't, you don't maintain the node. The node is someone else's node. So you don't, okay, wait a second. In this case, we're talking about a node that Christian creates on the, let's say, the preprocessor node. Okay, maybe this is all wrong, and I say now, but let's call it this way: the preprocessor node delivering a stream of images to, let's yes. say, the tracker who needs this image stream because it has to process it. It doesn't have, need yeah. anything else. The tracker is <laughs> not working with anything else. Not with sound but if you, files, with whatever, right? It's always these kind of pictures. And it is yeah, not but if you, changing these pictures. So it takes what Christian you delivers. Keep at, <laughs> you keep, oh, oh, keep looking at only two parts of the system. Okay. 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 What, the, UI, the, 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 the UI needs those images to create a video stream. Yeah, but the UI is something totally different that can never work with a 16-bit image. No, it's not different. Guess that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's not different. Okay, there is one bus. Okay, images are being publishing on it. And then you'll have a node that we need to listen to that bus yeah. and convert the images to a video stream. Okay, now that node already exists in the community. If you take if that such does, a if node... If that doesn't support... If, if you... that doesn't support... Just a second. It, yeah. Yeah, of course we will take that node. That's the whole point. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. You will take the you will take no, no, the, no, that no, node. No more, no, more, no more than that. Put putting it into the neural network uh, uh, by Nvidia. They already have some nodes that are working like that. In a certain way with a certain protocol. Okay? If yeah, that there's, doesn't there's... support our our uh, 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 16 bit uh, images we will need to create a pull request to that node module by NVIDIA to fix that. So, and so Richard, so, so basically, this? Sorry, I, I so, think... Yeah, okay, go ahead, Mike. But this is an important no, point, no, either I'll, we talk about later. Go ahead, Mike. 
Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. It, it's important to to. So, in, I mean, a lot of these things are extremely specialist, right? And developers in in who work in NVIDIA are going to be able to write nodes that process data much faster than I than, than I than I can because it interacts with the data at a much lower level. If it has to they, interact. They're gonna, they, they, they're gonna have proprietary knowledge because a lot of those NVIDIA packages are not going to be open source, right? They they are gonna be they're gonna be closed source. It's libraries that you depend on. So so if we if we want to be able to process images at a fast rate, then we're going to have to use those packages, and we're going to have to almost conform to whatever I, format they support. I highly question that, and I say why. Christian, whatever Ross Note you call it, Christian is producing a image stream. Okay, he is producing this. This is a whatever call you a ROS node, a web service, a web so whatever you call it. It's delivering a certain type of data in in a certain speed. Okay, and I'm quite sure, Christian. Please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm quite sure there is no even uh, a ROS two node that can be taken from the shelf that does exactly what Christian's then node is uh, doing. That, that, that's that's not true. Um, I'm going to to um, to write my side of uh, this interface. It, it will be an interface to the the normal uh, uh, messaging system. Um, I will write it like this: that the outcome is uh, in the standard way of doing things. It's um, I just have to feed that in from just one side. I take my image data, my my data from the camera, and form it uh, to fit right in, and where? to transfer to fit, wait, wait, all wait, the the, right the accuracy and, and the speed. Button to, to fit right in where and what? What do you mean with? I fit just right have in? to trans. I just have to transfer the data with the normal protocol. I do not have to to care about, okay, I'm using this specific format and this has to be transferred. No, I do not have to because I can uh, I can shape it the way I like to be transferred. And if there is uh, already uh, a transferring mechanism in place, then I, I look into it and uh, transfer the data the way it uh, it should be transferred. I do not uh, open up uh, um, a complete new universe uh, and only for use uh, this camera. Um, it, I just have to think about how to transfer the dynamic range and how to transfer a huge data uh, set very quickly. And I mean, using yeah. the standard formats that are already in place is what I'm going to do. I, I do not uh, create, uh, uh, let's say, a completely new node system. If we have to do that because we we can't succeed in transferring 16-bit uh, uh, <clears throat> image file with a high resolution, uh, then we are going to do that. Then we are uh, create, uh, creating uh, additional modules and uh, tell the community, okay, uh, we we pro, um, we provide um, the access to uh, a high level and high accuracy uh, um, and high resolution uh, for uh, image sequence. This is an additional model to the community, and if we have to do that, we will provide it. But it's using the standard protocol of transferring information, and th this doesn't matter which format we use. Exactly. So there That's is no I problem say. on that side. That's what I say. It doesn't matter. You, you, you just, whatever yeah. data you're creating, however you call it in the future, it is streamed over to the tracker. And Mike, it does not matter what kind of ROS 
I don't know even the, the, the way you, you named it, properties or whatever. It just has to deliver from one side to the other and you're picking up and process it. Why is there anything of a standard a from the shelf in play? I don't get it. So Because okay. all these things are already there. We do not have to invent it. But you do it already, the data Christian. You already have a camera that you invent. No, what? no, no. You don't Sorry, already I, do I, it. You I'm don't. totally wrong. We, we are only... We are only creating the image. We don't have any transformation to it or any anything that you need, need to do with images. Okay? There is an, an entire standard library of transformation of, of how you can manipulate an image. Okay? Already exists in, in uh, the ROS2 community. Is if that doesn't is, support... Are you using this? That doesn't support... If that doesn't support... If that doesn't support the image that we are producing, we will need to Absolutely. help that to, mm -hmm. to support it. That's but it. You, you say that we have to use this. And I say, Christian already has a library and it's an astronomic library and it's not a ROS2 library. So why, yeah, why then? Uh, that, that, that's, that, that's, that's, okay, that's something completely different. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about here. here. We really don't have to go. Uh, the, 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 let, let me let me sh share a screen. Okay. okay. Just a second. Give me. And, I'm, I'm preparing something here, so, so give me like two minutes. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Hey guys, okay. I, I I do get what you're all talking about. I think I do get it. So when you talk about Ross and the environment and all the other developers, they create an environment where you can take a ROS node for any particular purpose. You have one for PNGs, you have one for bitmaps, you have one for MP4 files, one that converts pink to, to blue and what have you. I understand this, but this is nothing of any use here. I don't get the point why it's so important that we have all standards where the camera is not even a standard, nor the data stream coming off from that pre-processed data is in any way standard. Mike, what you are doing with the tracker is in no way standard. It is. No, it is. It is. No, I, it, is. Oh, it, it is. is. I, it is standard I for us. So who are... Yeah. I, no, I depend on loads of... I depend on libraries that... If, like, I depend on OpenCV, for yes, example. Yes, of course, but so you if, mix it together if, like a cook and you have a new recipe, kind of. Yeah, but the thing is, if, like, if you gave me an image format that OpenCV didn't support, yeah. then I'm screwed. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm not going to rewrite Open, I, I, you know. Yeah, and you're not going to rewrite OpenCV, absolutely. You, yeah, yeah, exactly, just to support. So, um, and that same logic applies to everything else right so if you look at think of oh, I've, i'm reading a book on machine learning at the moment and all this sort of stuff and 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 i've and i've like also been looking into the um the 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 packages that are uh, that are made available by nvidia um via the isaac um repository and also they've got mm -hmm. a iot mm -hmm. repository and there's some really cool stuff there that um that i think we should leverage you know and in order to leverage that you need to conform to it you know they they're not going to change all their stuff because we want something you know we have to adapt and to whatever they require um and 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 you know that's going to get us to a position where it, it's going to get get us to a position where the tracker is successful much quicker than if we try and do all this stuff ourselves. Is there an so, obstacle to that? Sorry. Is there an obstacle to that getting the the camera feed the the format that the that the feed is in to be used by whatever so. library you use? Or... So, 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 so I think I think the, the 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 camera. I think that's what the driver does. Look, I think the driver basically takes the data from the camera and converts it into a format that we we all can use. I think that's the responsibility yeah. of the driver, okay. and, and, so that, that, and, that, and um, that's sorry. it. So that's where that's kind of where it's that's where that stops. You know, then. Once once it leaves the driver node, it's in a it's in a format that 
is universal across the Ross ecosystem. That, that's kind of my view view of it personally. I, I doubt yeah, it. That's so right. it's basically R good Richard, Richard might disagree. I agree, but... disagree. Because I've spoken to yeah, Christian, yeah. he's agreeing right he now, but know. I know he's different. Yeah. Well, you, you, you're more than welcome to like open up the code editor and crack on it. No, 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 no. It, it, it's, my, it's my responsibility <laughs> at the moment to just to do that, uh, write the right driver and deliver it in the right format. And uh, yeah. there are already for OpenCV, uh, it, um, there are already astronomical data formats in place, so there is no problem. I just have to get it in the right order and do the right steps for the pre-processing stuff, uh, and I'm delivering in uh, the right uh, format, the right way, with the right messaging and uh, the right uh, everything at it. So I don't see it as a problem. So yeah. Christian, because for, example, for me, it is no problem. If you go with fits. I doubt that there's anyone in the world with ROS2 ever worked with the FITS format. Uh, um, OpenCV um, contains um, uh, a module, um, a small function that converts a FITS, a FITS image uh, to any other image that uh, is in place. So uh, FITS is already in, in, uh, included uh, into OpenCV. So no problem. Okay. In this case, there is no transformation community necessary because it's just the output from the left side goes into the right side. Why? Why is it yes. the transformation? This, this is called generic programming. <laughs> you do not have to bother about the input or the output because this is already handled. Yeah, but there is no transformation in between the the QHY driver and the neural network, for example. Why is there? Uh, Ido, you 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 painted in transformation and then in brackets uh, community. Why is that so? Why is that necessary? Because, because the because the plugins that we are using is doing that. You need to parallelize yes. it. You need to split it to tiles, yeah. right? You have a lot of stuff that you're doing with the images that already exists out there. Okay. So Christian, there, there, yeah, mm, okay. There, there are image pipelines that already. I, I think I've kind of shared some links to them. There yeah. are existing image yeah. pipelines that exist, and we we should use versus re rewriting ourselves. You know, I, I would. My view is to start. My my view is quite strongly of the. Well, I'm quite strongly of the opinion or the view that. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good stuff out there that has already been written in the roster community and packages available. And I think we should try and use those, you know, wherever possible. You yes. know, we are going is, to use exactly that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so I think we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. I, I just, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, is there still some confusion, Richard? Is, is still, is yes, still no because I know about still... the data, because I know about the original data, and I don't see anything... Okay. Maybe I'm... No, you, you don't know about the data, because you didn't look at any implementation of NVIDIA pipelines. If you look at that, you will see, most likely, it doesn't support our data. Yes, true. Right? That's what I know, yeah. Exactly. So we will need to create a pull request to have them support our data. Because we are ut utilizing NVIDIA codes to create the pipeline to process the image in the neural network, as an example. So this is our uh, um, um, contribution to them. We, we produce uh, something that they will take as a standard for this kind of material. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Th this, th this is... Okay, if, if they say, hey, wow, uh, now we have that uh, covered, they are going to take it and uh, just use it. And this is how the things are going at that point. And yeah. So my, my, I mean, if I was NVIDIA, I would obviously, my question would be, well, hey guys, we've got cars that drive themselves around San Francisco. Why do we need this extra um, additional info and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Why, why do we need it in a different format or... Or additional metadata or whatnot. So, so I, you, 
I think you might struggle a little bit there, but you can, not, you know, not really, not, not, not really. Okay, autonomous cars have diff different requirements from astronomy. Okay, and 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 that's the main reason that most likely will have to go that route and implement that. Okay, um, uh, uh, like we look, we looked at the the the, the indie protocol, and, and we already have all the. Um, uh, um, um, you know, like messages kind of defined for us if we need to go that route. And that's where we speak about like we will need to add like the inti protocol into us, in, in, into the community of us. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's fair enough. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll refrain. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Like, like um, we, had he... two, we, we had two op options. Option number one that we discussed like early in the beginning, like uh, 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 Christian, I, you and I spoke about it a lot. If yeah. we want to, uh, uh, like, uh, um, uh, you know, implement uh, 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 like 16-bit support into a, a, a video for Linux, and I don't think uh, anyone wants that <laughs> uh, uh, because everyone is starting to move away from that, uh, uh, really. Uh, uh, but because everything again is implemented in Indie server and in, in, in the Indie protocol, uh, and we have ROS2, which is real time, it's probably better to just do that, use that. So that was like the early discussion that we had about how to integrate these uh, high resolution images. There are already two um, standardized um, uh, video formats uh, in place that support 16-bit uh, uh, dynamic range. Which one? This is called yeah. SER and ah, uh, Matroshka. Mm -hmm. Both support 16-bit already, so there is no no problem to use that. We just have to to put up. I would uh, prefer to use the SER uh, system. Um, because it's just an image sequence uh, and can be transferred to any other uh, uh, container system uh, within real time. So I don't think there, there will be a problem. We just have to organize the data in, in, in the correct yeah. order uh, to gain the speed we want. This is uh, the only problem we have and not uh, uh, what data format in the end will uh, be transferred. So yeah. there won't be a, um, a bottleneck or something we have to bother about uh, the interfacing uh, part with uh, ROS2. It's, it's uh, just a, a matter of the, the driver I'm going to, to write, and I just have to put it in the right format to, to transfer it. And uh, so that any other thing doesn't have to be changed. And uh, we have a lot of data, of course, yes, but I figure out uh, the the right way to to um, uh, to put it in um, a very good uh, order to transfer it very nicely. So it's just a matter of time to 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 find the the right solution for that. And we the the world around us has not to adapt uh, to us. Or we to we I think what, what's already in place. Yeah, I think we, we've got so many challenges to overcome, you know, just if you if, if you get to like the the machine learning neural networky side of things, you know, there's so many challenges there that we're going to have to overcome. I, th I think the quicker we can get something standardized, the better, really. The, you know, the, the, as soon as you can get me a video of the, of the sort of... Um, frame size and and and, and, and that, that, that you are going to publish i i, I you know I'd, I'd re i really would like to give that a try yeah i do a recording and uh put it uh into i think let's say two or three uh, video formats uh and i think there won't be any problem with that they will be a little bit huge, but uh, since it's uh, it's a recording already and not live feed, that won't matter. Why again a video? Why? The only reason for a video I see for the front uh, for the user interface. Where yeah, yeah, you need yeah. A video. We're, we're talking about that. Ah, okay. We're only. talking about that only because I don't see only. a video somewhere else. Okay, got it. 
No, 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 just just for for uh, uh, for uh, the development part that we are uh, using now and. Um, for uh, for transferring the data as a live feed later, things are a little bit different. Okay. So uh, we can have a try, and I'm I'm looking it up uh, if um, if uh, OpenCV two already uh, has a package for uh, for the usage of SER uh, videos. Or oh, this is more a sequencing uh, thing. And I think it is already in place. Mm -hmm. And if it is, we are good. So, by the way, if you want to see a helicopter, we can do that now. Yes. Yeah, okay. nice. OK. So, Mike, one question. Uh, you know about SER, image sequences? <laughs> Uh, uh, but but I can I can, I can we can we can work through it. I, I I'm not I don't want to um I, I as long as if OpenCV can load it or if some other two ROS some other ROS two package can load it and provide it via topic to me, then I can use it. That's the main thing. I mean. Uh, Yannick, sorry. Yeah, that's, when... that is the basic idea of using uh, yeah, what no is already in place. And if we have to, to change that in, let's say, uh, one or two years, that uh, we say, okay, it would be nice to have that. We're going to do that. But at the moment, we just have to get it running. And uh, we're exactly. using what is yeah. already in place. And uh, we, uh, we do not make a fuss about it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, agreed, agreed. And it's my responsibility to get it in the right format. Yeah. So other can uh, so so but others can use it. What you are and getting out, I Christian, do have two or three ideas to do that. What you are getting without out, losing Christian, any information. Yeah, Christian, what you are producing from the camera is just images, and we have to stick to that. I, I always hear video and video here and video there. I, I think we shall stop this. The only video that is in play is maybe an MP4 that goes to the user interface, and everything else is all image based, right? Even yeah, but I mean, we just yeah, but we just use I just use the term video just as a to because it's it's a common term to describe a sequence of images that ah, change okay. over time. Okay, wow, dear, that's that's confusing me a lot. Okay. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Yeah, but I, I got Mike ri uh, right, so there, there wasn't any confusion on my side. I, I got ah, right okay. what uh, Mike meant with it, and I think we're cool with that. Ah, okay, got it. Yannick, your turn. Okay, so I'm just going to play it <laughs> here right now. So I hope you're going to see it. Um, you see my sh uh, shared screen, right? Yes. This is a helicopter. Do you? Okay, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. Easy. Okay. Yeah, again, it, it takes a while, but I was pretty sure that this is a helicopter. So it says, it thinks it's a plane. So it's all it knows, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, It only knows yeah. planes and birds. Mm -hmm. so Maybe just, yeah, yeah. Yannick, it, it might be yeah. worth, um, is it worth just changing the versus a plane and a helicopter just to have it as an aircraft, maybe? Um, sure, but um, when it says plane, it's uh, it, it's a category where I plugged in only planes, so I can I okay. I could okay. I could try I could train it on. Um, no, I could no, no, train no, no. it, it on just, all sorry, no, I... aircraft, and then yeah, yeah, I could do that. Okay, so I can just check what the probability was for the last. Last thing I, I, here. I, oh. I, I guess the the, uh, the only the right. only reason I mentioned that is I, I think helicopters are going to fly similar to planes, so you you you, you might you, you might struggle to differentiate the two. I mean that that was the only reason. Yeah. It's a know. good point. I, th you I think you so too. To. Yeah. Uh, um, if they, so... if they just if they just uh, head somewhere, let's say they they transfer something blah blah and if they are not in a search mode with a search 
fly pattern, if mm-hmm. their behavior is not searching, uh, then they will be uh, um, recognized as planes because they fly in a straight line. But right. if they if they start, stop. let's say, looking for if a missing stop, person or if so, they stop in mid-flight, for example. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then it would probably confuse the whole training mechanism if we, if I plug in all planes and and helicopters and so on in one category. Yeah, that, w- that could, yeah. So uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so here currently it says it's a sixty-one percent chance it's a plane, mm-hmm. <laughs> and thirty-nine, it's a it's a bird because that's mm-hmm. all it knows. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah that that's how it deals with probability so it's uh, it's um having it's living in a world let's say where only two things exist mm-hmm. so to speak but Yannick, the idea is yeah. that for example yeah. if we have if we have the procedure that i could use for example the tracker and take a whole directory and crush it through then at the end, you get videos that tell whether there is a bird or a plane or a helicopter or a drone or whatever in it or something like this in a probability. Mm-hmm. I mean, this yep. all, this, this, this sequence of take a video. We're talking about the material now, the, the training material now, and this is only existing in, 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 in video material because we want to, to see, to look for drones and helicopters and all different stuff. And yes, we cannot simulate right now. So that's why we have the training material. We just have to to crush it through. There are 50,000 videos. We have to crush them through to get out Mm -hmm. all the the, the, the planes, the the helicopters, the drone, from our point of view as as humans. And then we should then, of course, watch each each one, each sequence by Mm -hmm. hand and say, as a human, this is a helicopter, this is a bird and so forth. And then you yeah, have let's a, say, a array labeling. of ten or twelve different uh, classifications classes. That yeah. would be then interesting. But... Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to have more classes and more training data, definitely. And then I can rerun the training and see what happens. So how yeah. can we? How, what what is needed to to be there? Um, just enough tracks of uh, in all the categories that we are interested in. So. Currently, I just have one track for helicopter. So if I have, let's say, a hundred tracks, then there's enough, I guess, ho- enough data for training. Mm-hmm. Or if I have a hundred tracks of insects, mm-hmm. I can do that too. Mm-hmm. So um, it's uh, a good thing is if you have um, 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 uh, approximately the same training material for each category. It doesn't have to be like that, but it's. I think it's a. Uh, it's a good thing to have if you have. Almost the same training material for for each category and, and and currently it's just uh, for birds and 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 planes that I really have yeah. enough. I would say. Yeah. So. Yeah, we um, shouldn't overweight weight a certain class. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if we have more data, I'm happy to do that. It's just uh, over Google Drive, it takes a while to download even that yeah, data. I... So I, I I spent like one and a half days just uh, downloading the data, extracting and doing the labeling for that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, what I can do, Yannick, but, yeah. is, for example, I, I'm, I'm still using and yeah, that's an old version of the tracker. One of the very first ones, Mike, maybe you can remember where you first time you created these JSON files. So I have this version here locally. Yes. Maybe this is, yeah, I can bin it and you have a better one. But I think I, I'm having here three and a half terabyte of videos, uh, about 50,000 videos. And it's much harder to do this by hand as a human. So it would be nice if we can if i can start just this program and let it run for a week or two or three and then at the end i got all these json files that that yannick can use and then i put all these json files with all these videos on one disk and i could send it to yannick we're on the disk yeah so 
it, that it should sense? support that, Richard. Yeah, so so it should already be able to do that. In all fairness, I mean, w- w- I can work with you to try and get it working for you. I mean, that's I I remember doing that at the beginning of the year, yeah. um, trying but basically running the tracker over. A, a large amount of, at that point we didn't support masking the way we do now exactly. so a lot of me me so a lot of manually so there was a lot of manual work to yeah. remove videos that were just um you know the, the, the plants, your yeah, the, the bush the yeah bushes, it yeah. was just yeah that, that sort of stuff so now that we support masking the 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 actual number of videos that is outputted will will reduce. Um, I, I'm sure I included it in there. So I'm sure I included. I'm sure I included the ability to basically point to a folder, and then the fo- it will loop through all the videos in a folder, and then um, copy videos that have been processed to another folder um, once they've been processed, and um, and remove them from the processing folder you know that's all that sort of stuff I, i'm sure it's there i i can work with you to try and get that you know to try yeah. and get that sorted yeah. for you and the, the the only thing is that we still have to look into the videos themselves because we need to know what kind of object is uh sure. is in which sure. track this is easy uh, okay i'll give you an okay. idea <laughs> Wait a sec, I share my screen. Now, this is really easy because okay. uh, in the second that I... Uh, I, so I spent hours and hours and hours doing a beginning of the year. And, uh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you, you see my share screen? <clears throat> yes. Okay. So this is my, my archive. This is the, the 3.5 terabytes. And I just go into one of these crops. Here I go in. So that's the result of the tracker. And it's uh, in August I made this. What you see now is this whole archive is split into eight um, archives, let's say, because each is too much, too many videos. Otherwise, Windows uh, can go make a coffee now. You see how long it takes if, if there are too many in one folder. But the idea is now that I have the results, the frames, from the tracker that I extracted from the video. I do not have to see the whole video. I do not have to see every part of that video because the tracker already gives me the, the cropped images and I can see very easily. Oh, that's, as a human, I can say that's the plane and this is the track, 0D8A8 and so forth. And I can go back and take from here, the, oh, it is already processed, the 0 8 a8 and so forth, for example. And okay, that was the wrong one. <laughs> but I hope you get my. Uh, yeah, idea. I just wanted to point out that we need this kind of human labeling. Still. Yes. Yeah. I, I think this yeah. way, by by just looking on the cropped frames, is is rather easy. Is I can I can, can scroll mm-hmm. through and see where where's nothing, where there's only mo- um, clouds and so forth, and I see immediately. Yeah, that's. That's a plane. If I scroll further on, maybe there's another plane. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what that is, but that's that's yeah. certainly a bird, for example. Yeah. So as okay, a human, that that I would be a start. That. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a start because, uh, but the we also have to. There are f- uh, some things that I also checked for. For example, when we have a, a bounding box of a bird, let's say, mm-hmm. sometimes the birds fly into clouds. And then the box gets stuck at the cloud, and yeah, you know. And then yeah. um, like you can't use that track anymore like for the one. kinematics approach. Uh, maybe, yeah. But this uh, is a, and this is an issue yeah. of of the, the 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 method that you're using right now because it assumes that you take thirty frames, and in these thirty frames, um, the object yes. of interest has to be there which we cannot do that right now. Yeah. So this so, is an intermediate problem, I'd say. Yeah. So that's, I just want to say that I was uh, checking for that too, in, for each track, mm-hmm. that it doesn't get, that the box doesn't get stuck in the me- middle of the track on a different object. 
because that could cause uh, problems in the training. Mm -hmm. So sometimes yeah, also, star, yeah. uh, sometimes also the birds fly out of the frame and the box gets stuck at the edge of the um, mm -hmm. image, mm -hmm. and then it uh, it doesn't move anymore. So, but when I say this is a bird, our algorithm learns then that birds can fly and stop basically immediately, and that's not what I want to teach our model, right? Because that would typically some be eventually something else that we want to see. <laughs> but in the future, uh, your model is not taking videos, right? No, I just take the uh, position of the of the bounding box and I, I label it as a whatever it is uh, exactly. initially. You're like, uh, taking, is it a bird or is it a plane or yeah, whatever? You're just taking the... Yeah. The, 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 ve the vectors basically and not something of image yeah. Uh, yeah yeah but what i wanted to point out is that sometimes the uh, the bounding box of a bird for example gets stuck at a cloud and then when i label it as a bird you know it's still the, the whole track is labeled as a bird and that yeah, can cause yeah. issues when these kinds of things happen so i i checked for for that too so i only accepted boxes bounding boxes where uh, it was centered on the bird, for example, for the whole track mm -hmm. and not on other objects, yeah. which can happen sometimes. It's just just something we have to check for. And Clean uh, let's say, mm -hmm. so my initial goal were, would be, let's say, to have for each category have 100 tracks. And then I, I'm going to try to see what happens when I plug it in the model and train the model. We can we can then then test if it works fine, or yeah, with with test material with uh, tracks that it has not seen yet. Yeah, but to 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 have tracks without any wrong. I mean, this is a nice one. For example, see, this yeah. is a long track, zero a zero, but it's it also has. Uh, let's say here you see that this looks good. Where oh, it's yeah, yeah, and, and then, and then you, there. you know, I, I just go look into the video and see uh, does the movement of the box make sense mm -hmm. for a bird or, or doesn't it make sense? So mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to, to, to check it, really. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Mike, <clears throat> yeah. if you could help me um, some win, I, I want to support um, Lionel's and, and Yannick's work here with fresh material because I have it here and it has to be used somehow. Um, I am have a, a suggestion. Um, um, could we make use of uh, Zooniverse? I post it in the chat here on this code he, here in our video chat. Um, a way uh, that we can make use of Zooniverse. Um, it, um, it is a platform uh, where we can um, have other peoples that uh, um, they they browse through files doesn't matter if it's uh, images or videos uh, they, they browse through it and label it um, and I posted two links the the one from the website and one from how to uh, uh, build uh, such a project um, maybe we should look into it and get help by the community we do I don't think if we have to pay for it, but uh, the people that uh, are labeling for us, in this case, they don't get paid. Because ordinary people. We did this already. And if we set up the sample uh, uh, in in the right way, uh, we I don't think that we have to bother about it. Christian, we did this already. We had um, Zooniverse? No, not Zooniverse. Labeling. We did this already. We had um, 10 people from the community labeling, I think, a couple of thousand images. Yeah, yeah. We have yeah. Uh, about 10,000 images labeled, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, so, um, what else is missing? I have so to look into, uh, into these labeled images again and see what kind of categories we had and how much material we ah, had in okay. there. Th that, uh, I didn't get that. Uh, so yeah, okay. But uh, if we produce uh, more material with uh, a different uh, kind of uh, quality, uh, 
maybe uh, you making use of Zooniverse um, for the additional material would be nice. Yeah, that, that could be the case, yeah. Um, if I, we can make the people look at whole tracks, that, that would be great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in this, there's not many tools. I think uh, Nicola spoke about making such a tool. Because there yep. is actually none. I mean, there are tools and enough platforms, I, do, I know, that you create those tools. So to, to label, for example. But there is none that's out of the box that you can use. So someone had to go to a platform and create or mm, configure or whatever. But it, we should do this with our community because the community here on Discord, so many people always have asked how can they help. They want to help. They want to help us. They are not able to code, but that's okay. But they are able to, to watch and, and label material. I think we should use this and not go somewhere else. Yeah, that would be a good idea, I think. Yeah. That's a good work for volunteers. Exactly. I just did that uh, quickly, or not so quickly, by myself because I just wanted to make progress. So I just, I just went for it. But when it's more about having more tracks, more material, mm -hmm. I think it would be a good way to include volunteers again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think for the volunteers, it, it makes sense because the, the full video is, let's say, two. 2880 by 2880, for example. And there are so many things going on. As a human being, you're seeing a lot of clouds moving around and maybe you miss the thing that the tracker did not miss. For example, the birds flying on the very left side. But the tracker, as Mike did it, does not only output the JSON file, but also outputs the cropped images. And I think if we take the cropped images, the, the, the tracker produces them and throws them all in a folder. We just have to, to create a simple tool that takes these images and groups them by their name because they all have the event ID slash blah, blah, blah. And by this, we have also a running number, number one, two, three, and so forth. So we could very easily take those amount of frames of little tiny 64 by 64 pixel images and present it to the user just by playing one after the other. And uh, I would like to uh, point out that um, Brad has made uh, some, uh, classif some manual classification on his uh, data set. So there, there are already uh, five classes with uh, the uh, videos in, uh, I think it was five folders. There's one for airplane, one for bugs. On that drive? that would be great, yeah. Is if I could have so well, well, uh, I mean, uh, I'm a bit moving uh, from house to house, so I don't have my hard drive with me, but it's uh, it's there somewhere. Those uh, those five folders with the videos that uh, Brad uh, classified manually. Oh, it's not it's not only on my drive. Uh, better ask uh, Brad where ah, where okay. it's at. But yeah, uh, that, that would be great there. to have. Yeah, I, I can provide. I have it somewhere, but I can provide it now because I'm uh, I'm moving from one house to the other, and I uh, all my stuff is uh, in boxes. <laughs> Living out the box. Okay. Hey, I I actually have to move on. So yeah, we all we uh, all actually have it. Is Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I thought of uh, showing a demo. Well, ah, that's okay. Go ahead, show the demo. And whoever <laughs> okay. has to leave. Yeah, Got see it. ya. Bye bye, see ya. Bye bye. Cheers. I have something, I have something small to show. Uh, one second. Okay. And the anticipation we... is killing me. <laughs> Do you see my uh, uh, skin? The suspense. Yeah. Snake desktop. Yeah, okay, so um, let's start. So, 
what I'm doing now is I'm building the uh, the indie package for Nix, okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll show exactly what it's being done. So I already have a pull request to add myself as a maintainer. So this basically command builds all the packages that I'm maintaining. The moment, uh, I mean, um, if I show you what's been compiled under Beam, you will see here. Uh, Democrats doesn't agree with me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so if, if you if you see here, and I, I I'll, I'll try to put everything that is QHI and uh, the pin. Sorry. No. No matches. Je vais faire ça. Non, si je peux faire ça, je suis là. Sorry. Non, je vais faire ça. 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 Je Remove the system. Hey Lionel, so if you mute, um, I cannot understand why do for your children. Thank you. Apologies. And if I build it for my X64. A second, it will take a few. Yeah, if I look at this one. So you see here, I have the driver, the in the QHI CD. Yeah. And I have the test, everything was compiled. Okay. Now the problem here is this line, right? See, it's only designed for x uh, x86-64. Now there is already a function called STDF is ARM uh, uh, ARC64 but I'm still having issues with it so I'm fixing it right now mm -hmm. but if I'm going to the old sky camera now I'm inside the Raspberry Pi and I do here uh, um, I have a script just like built and pick it we just use this directly. The old sky camera is your Pi. Yeah. Oh yeah, I moved it. That's why. Um, code. It's obsolete. G. Next build. The same. And that's building it now directly on the Pi. Right? Hmm. So I have an emulator that is running on my X64 that I can build with. And I can have, and I have directly on the Pi also. So now I'm just waiting for the comments from the maintainer how to properly adjust it. Um, I, I was trying to set up the, uh, the, the Helix editor for like Nix autocomplete, but uh, the, the, uh, there are some issues with it. So I created another uh, uh, issue around it and I'm waiting for that maintainer. <laughs> so there is a lot of collaboration here happening with like five, six different GitHub issues. <laughs> okay. uh, since Friday, there is uh, an indie, uh, a lib indie minus QHY version for the actual uh, indie server. It's 1.9.8 existing uh, for the Pi. Who did it? Yeah, it, uh, on, on Friday evening it was available. Oh, yeah? I, I yeah. didn't check. Um, where for for Nix or for the from the indie server itself? For the indie server itself. 
but uh, I updated uh, it on my Pi uh, to um, to see some issues that uh, I wanted to talk about. Some guys uh, on the uh, astronomy and telescope uh, uh, fair um, I went to on Saturday, and uh, therefore I tried it uh, out, and it was working. Cool. So, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get that compiled on Nix and I'll have it working. Yeah. And at least I have a development environment already set up. So we're, we're, we can build Nix packages now. Yes. And th this is the beauty of, uh, um, of the uh, Nix uh, package uh, uh, system. Um, because you can build it for whatever you need to, as, as long as uh, the sources are, uh, um, are done well. Yes. Yes. And I yeah, I'm been getting to like Nix. I'm beginning to really like Nix, and you can use it on any other Linux system as well. And this is the beauty of it. Yes. Like, uh, I, I, I can show a bit, maybe, about Nix. Um, uh, oh, sorry. I'm... Yeah, so basically to build my system, this is what I have, right? I have like my host name, my username. I have even the style, the background image. Um, and then if I look at let's say my home so yeah everything is here configuring yeah. everything so for example my tiling manager it's all in like a nice configuration so if i change something here it's actually compiling it so it's compiling the configuration file so if there is an error i will know about it and what's nice is if there is a new version and the configuration change I will start getting compilation error, which will address me to change to look at the new configuration file. Can you, um, very, sorry, it's man, very, I'm, very powerful. Yeah. So, so can you, um, so, um, yeah, it might not be there. But I'm just trying yeah. to understand what 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 all this is. <laughs> sorry. Um, basically, so, uh, Nix is um, a package management system. But uh, uh, one, um, you maybe know uh, from Arch that they have got a package management system uh, uh, which uh, you can compile things right from the source code, let's say, uh, directly from uh, GitHub. Nix yeah, is going yeah. a step further. Uh, it adds the possibility of configuring it uh, uh, in a very, very nice and easy way. And uh, I think and it's the these... next step for... for uh, a packaging system. And is that what these Nix files are? They is yes. that the is that basically the the kind of the build definition? Is it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, in our case, the binary is running on the Raspberry the Nvidia Jetson. Is that right? Uh, yes. You can configure it to run it everywhere. Okay, but the purpose of this is to have a, a binary uh, of yeah, the, what is it, the driver? More, more a disk a image. More disk a image. disk image. Yeah, okay, so for so example, the, the disk image, this is how I'm building it, right? This is my configuration. I have the hardware that I'll show in a second. And basically, I'm setting up the group net, uh, uh, the host name for the, 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 the image. Uh, okay, so... Driver, some console. So I can yeah. download this build and uh, upload it to my Jetson, and it will have everything. Yeah, yeah. And okay. you see here the packages in the full, authorized keys, and that's it. Right. So I, I yeah. really have like minimal so what, stuff here with some tools that I, I like. So what that's do you it. need? So so obviously you're going to need some sort of bootstrap or something to initiate. So if if you're saying this describes, is this does this describe the OS? Is that is that what you're saying? Exactly, is that that? exactly. Yeah, and here's the hardware, right? So here is my file system, the mounts, right? So 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 what here. sort of bootstrap do you use? That so you're gonna need you're gonna have to have something that basically interprets this build file and does stuff. And is that called Nix OS? Yeah, Nix OS or build, and I can do a switch. 
And when I run it, that will create a build. It will update uh, 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 some package and will switch, will switch the system to the new configuration. Okay. But really? in the case yes. of... And, and I, I, I can, I, I have a command, I didn't work on it yet. But, you know, when you build it, it will actually will produce an image file for uh, that you copy to your uh, SD card. Because so you, just, it, you, yeah. you just flash it on the SD card, then you put the SD card in a Pi yeah. or uh, the Nano or whatever and uh, uh, just run it. Yeah. Okay. So that's a way to basically standardize build images then like so so we can easily then produce yes um, and nobody has to to go uh, deep uh, uh, into the system and change anything we just uh, this is uh, what uh, Nix can do for us and uh, we can run it uh, from scratch you just produce the disk image and uh, no one has to configure anything but uh, on a, uh, his or her own, uh, and uh, this is um, yeah, uh, for what's uh, done. Uh, I'll, I'll give you another done. example. This is what's the powerful uh, part I can do. Nix shell, um, let's say Python uh, uh, 3.8. If I do Python, I have a 3.8, right? Now I can do the same on 3.9. 3.9. So that's almost like the Anaconda then. You, you can set up different virtual environments, like execution environments. Yeah, but it's more than that. Yeah. It, okay. It's system wide. And you, you can do it with, let's say, K stars or uh, let's say yeah. whatever you like, you, uh, Google uh, Earth, uh, for example. Yeah. So if, if you look at the uh, K stars, right? Um, you can use it for for ROS2. Uh, you can use it for Docker. Doesn't matter because it's a packaging system that you can use. Uh, th these packages are uh, only uh, downloaded or, or compiled or, um, uh, for the session that you create. So if you want to try something out and you don't want to to install it and uh, deinstall de it uh, afterwards. Um, with Nix, you can just run it. Yeah. And if you uh, if you quit the session, the, the, the Nix session, it's like it's never been there. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, but, that's, that, that's all cool and everything. Uh, yeah, OK. So but you can use a uh, persistent system, too. You can install things uh, that can be used system-wide, and they are uh, um, installed uh, for offline usage. You can do that too. Yeah. Um, I know. One question. Um, if you make a package, let's say for a Pi, is this image then just put on an SD card, put into the Pi and booted? Yeah. Meaning the, and, and what that, is the that, OS? Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. The, the OS will be Nix OS. The OS is Nix OS. Yeah. Huh. Why? Why can we uh, can we use Nix OS for for all platforms? Yeah. Even even on the uh, the Jetsons. Even on the Jetson, yes. With the Nvidia libraries, with. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That's why we chose that. Okay, that's sweet. And yeah. is it so? Uh, I'll, uh, the, I'll show the, you. Uh, how how big is it? I mean, um, the 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 Pi only supports thirty two gig on the SD card. Is that sufficient for NixOS? Uh, I'm running yeah. it on sixty four. Yeah, but it's yeah. only using thirty two. This is what I have. 
right? So you see this is running on the Raspberry Pi. This is the kernel, right? This is how many packages I've installed, the resolution, terminal, CPU, and memory. Oh, cool. So I'm running it on the four gigs. Wow, okay? that's cool. Yeah. So again, if I if I look at the uh, at the configuration, right? You can see here. Uh, where is it? Here, the initial password, right? So user user will have like a different password. We can say like a, a username will be, uh, let's say Sky three sixty password Sky initial password Sky three sixty. Right, and it will have the uh, will have the indie full, and then they can decide to do whatever with it. <laughs> no, actually not. Yeah, but Christian will have the the, the big security <laughs> authorization. So yeah, so I, I use an uh, authorized keys. Yeah. yeah, so I use authorized keys. Okay. Right, so that, that's... Yeah. That's the idea. So it makes sense, Christian. Uh, I do it. I think it makes sense if you you both have these secret keys and only you two have these secret keys okay no one else yeah shall we talk, uh, Ido and me talked about that uh, um, yeah and uh, yeah okay and it's it's good that uh, Ido is showing it uh, uh, right to you with uh, an example and uh, yeah yeah and I started to like uh, Nix OS uh, very much because it's so easy to mm -hmm. uh, maintain disk images with that. You can install anything and everything, and uh, you can keep it small, you can keep it big, whatever you like. And it is so much fun to 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 work with it. Yeah, I like it really much. But it's based on the Linux kernel, right? It is Linux. It is Linux. It is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if, and, if and, I, uh, for example, and, if I show you my you. my system, right? So I'm running on kernel six or nine, right? X X. You're running on a PC. I'm running on a PC now. Right, yeah. got it. Sweet. And I already fitted uh, uh, two uh, laptops with it. Uh, yeah. Huh. Is there a yeah, GUI I, element to it? I'm sorry? Is there a GUI element to it or is it all command line based? You're looking, what do you mean GUI element? You, you, you create your own uh, uh, GUI in, in Linux, right? X Windows, he means. Like, like let, let, me, let me show something. Uh, you can use uh, Cinnamon or Mate or, or Unity if you like, uh, yeah. but uh, for the configuration of uh, uh, Nix, uh, normally you do not need one yeah. because you have you, you create one configuration file and there's everything in it. Uh, but I think there is um, a GUI for the configuration already in place. Yes, but I yeah. wouldn't use it. Do, do you see my screen now? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 So, so, so no, notice that that um, um, uh, I, I don't know, like um, everything has like my colors, right? Well, right now it's like a theme that I'm trying Dracula, but you you see, like I control the colors. No one else will tell me which colors to look at, right? And I, I, I um, again, I'm, I'm using like a a, a, a tiling method. Like, stop working. But I'm using, I'm using a tiling manager, so when I open one, see it's just opening like that. Oh, okay. It's awesome. It's uh, tiling, uh, yeah. the, the, the window manager is awesome. But it's, it's X Windows based, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry? It's X Windows based. Yes, it's X Windows based. Mm. Yeah. So you can see it like this, like that. You have I different think. workspaces as well? Uh, huh? Yeah. Different workspaces? Uh, different, yes, different workspaces. Yeah, I'm showing you. Wow. Okay, this is. I, 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 bear, uh, oh. I barely use the mouse. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that, that I, I really want to focus on the, uh, less the mix, but more, more on the development environment. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I hope to to hear back from the maintainers um, so I can start really uh, implementing it. Uh, for now, I'm trying to fix like my uh, uh, um, my development editor, uh, like Helix, uh, to to have like auto completion for Nix. Because it's too it's too difficult not to uh, write code when you don't know what the possibilities are. <laughs> there are just too many packages and too many a, 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 a APIs to to look. It's easy when you have it right there with the documentation and everything. By the way, Christian, it has uh, uh, auto completion for Rust. So uh, you get all the uh, helix. So you have uh, uh, it uses the uh, the three seater uh, uh, backend for auto uh, auto completion. It's really cool. Hey guys, sorry, um, I have to interrupt here. Um, first of all, I stopped the recording right now. Okay. Yeah, I saw you're using the fish.